It is International yes, Yoga, yoga Day. Day. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot is happening on a Monday, which yes. is which is I think great. Mm -hmm. Yes, it seems, it seems like the celebration continues. I know they celebrated yesterday as yes. uh, International Yoga Day at the Bayou, uh, Buffalo Bayou Buffalo Park. Yes, yes. So now the uh, actually official one is today. Right, so, right. So it's that's just right. Like, mm -hmm. So yoga with the dads today again? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the moms, the moms are more fre uh, flexible. The <laughs> them now, they can just go and work out today. But uh, so today is, um, today we have our friend Bhavna Lutra. We have Arjun Lutra on today and of course we are going to talk about yoga and Ayurveda. Yes. And uh, my co-host, my beautiful co-host Sonal Kulkarni. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Sonal for coming. It's Absolutely. always nice, you know, like it's having you honor. here and we really enjoy it. And uh, as everyone knows, Sonal uh, has her own studio, Svenga Sugarland. Mm -hmm. yes. And we Chai Time girls go there. And we're loving it. Especially Sasha, who's not here today. Maybe she's at Svenga. I don't know. <laughs> we should check. I right? hope so. We should check and see. <laughs> see if she's checked in. <laughs> I know. I need to check the app and see. Maybe she's there. Right? <laughs> All right, so Arjun, let me ask you. Uh, what is Ayurveda? What does it mean? Yeah. So I guess I'll introduce myself yes, more quickly absolutely. for the listeners. Um, my name is Arjun Lutra. Um, I am just recently finished my one year, roughly one year program as a um, as an Ayurvedic health counselor. So I received certification as an Ayurvedic health counselor. Um, so just to introduce what Ayurveda is, Ayurveda is a system of health. Um, if you break down Ayurveda, it's into two terms. Ayur and Ved. So Ayur is um, um, life and then Veda is science. So it is a science of life. And everything that we see in Ayurveda is breaking down into from morning to evening, everything is laid out on what you should do to maintain your health. Um, and that's pretty much what Ayurveda is. It's a system of health wellness um, that um, I think has a lot much to offer for us uh, as individuals to practice in our life. And um, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. So, uh, Ayurveda, you, I mean, I guess is more personalized from my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so, how could you elaborate on that? How is it personalized and how can one, you know, basically, mm -hmm. how can you personalize it and how yeah. can you benefit also from yeah. that? So, um, I think what is seen in, you know, in allopathic medicine that's different from Ayurveda is that, you know, in allop allopathic medicine, if someone has a particular condition, mm -hmm. um, there's often times one prescription that's given, one medication that's given, right. um, and it's to all patients suffering from that problem. But Ayurveda sees things that each person has an individual body constitution that is um, unique to themselves and that they should... Uh, and according to that constitution, a certain health practices are more favorable. Certain uh, herbs are more favorable for that person. So that's something that Ayurveda uh, specifically looks at. And you know, some people have a more leaner um, body physique, and some people have a more bulkier body physique. And it's completely natural mm -hmm. for someone to have a ha heavier physique. It's completely natural for them to be in that physique. Someone who's leaner. Who's it's harder for them to, um, you know, uh, to have uh, gain weight. That's perfectly normal as well. So I think in in uh, in Western medicine, it's like all one box fits all kind of thing. And we also have that impression in society that everyone should fit this sort of box of what it means to be healthy. Um, but health is individual to each person. Okay. And I think that's what Ayurveda looks at. Okay. And but how would you assess, like you said, lean body type or a more robust body type, or but how if I have some issues, like health issues versus somebody else, how do you assess that? I mean, how do you go about, like, what medication would you give me versus my friend mm -hmm. here, or you know? Right. So there's a couple of considerations whenever we're addressing a person's health. Is um, um, I guess I've been trained. Uh, specifically to know what certain body type um, corresponds to what is best for them. Um, so 
we in, in Ayurveda we see three body constitutions um, predominant. They're, these are the three major body constitutions, Vata, Pitta, and Kapha. Mm -hmm. And um, so according to, and, and those actually have, these are basically functional pairings in our body. Mm -hmm. um, but in Ayurveda we see that the body is composed of five material elements. Fire, water, air, um, fire, eight, fire, water, earth, air, and ether. Mm -hmm. um, so these are all the elements in our body, and according to what's most predominant, so vata is air and space, pitta is fire and water, earth is, I mean, kapha is earth and water. Um, so all of these are um, people who are more predominant of certain elements that determines their body constitution, and that also determines what is the best diet for them, um, what is the most, uh, like conducive life practices for them. So I see their body uh, constitution. Um, that's something that I always look at. Um, that's the first thing that we look at as, um, as counselors. Mm -hmm. And the second thing that we look at is um, the strength of their digestion. So everything that we take, um, you know, it starts with our digestion. Our, our ability to digest things is extremely important. Um, it's not just what we eat, but what we can actually digest. Awesome. Right? So some people you think that, oh, calories is simply what we, uh, we often look at. But is our food that we're consuming actually tolerable to our digestive system? Um, so that's something that we look at, is how strong is one's digestion? Um, you know, the same food that could be uh, beneficial for one person could be poisonous to another person. Um, and, uh, and so that's uh, what we look at. And um, of course, we also, um, that's the second thing. So body constitution, digestion. And the third thing is whether they have any sort of, uh, there's a concept of ama mm -hmm. um, in Ayurveda. And that refers to the, the toxins that we, as, um, that, that we often accumulate when our food is not digested properly. Yeah. And, um, the main focus there is that we want to remove those toxins and by doing so coming back to a state of detoxification and then once you kind of remove those toxins from your body you're able to rejuvenate yourself okay. in a more efficient and effective way because whenever our body is already taxed it's very hard for them to take in incoming food, nutrition. incoming nutrition exactly um, and, 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 and it doesn't only have to do in the physical level, but also the mental level. Right. Um, you know, if we are, for example, if, our, like, any, if anyone has any digestive issues, right, during the day, if like someone's constipation or gas, it also very much affects us at a mental level. Right. We're often very much ungrounded in those mm -hmm. moments. Mm -hmm. And we're not able to take on the stress Correct. that is coming around us. So that's something that we specifically look at in Ayurveda is, to see how is the phys at the physical level influencing our mental level and mm -hmm. what is happening at the mental level influencing our physical level. Right. So according to uh, what's going on at the psychological disposition of the clients that we see, we often, op we often prescribe certain uh, things to help them. So uh, that's what um, we assess. 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 So basically from what I gather is like you do assess uh, basically the the gut health. Mm -hmm. So that way, I mean, like what, if somebody's mm -hmm. constipated or something, how do you digest food? That's what you yes. specified. And I think everybody now does focus on gut health and mm -hmm. that everything begins in your gut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how would you assess that? And toxins, you, you spoke about toxins, like we yeah. take so many things and mm -hmm. somebody, it could affect your body. And mm -hmm. some people probably, how do you, like if I came to you and I said, I need some medication, how would you know? Um, I mean, I can tell you if I'm constipated, not constipated. I can tell you that. But about the toxins, mm -hmm. how would you know if I have a lot of toxins or you generally prescribe some, certain medicines to basically flush out mm -hmm. your system before you start a treatment? Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of physical indicators that we look at mm -hmm. um, whenever we're assessing ama in the body. Um, one is uh, generally some people, uh, the, the, it's called um, uh, jiva pariksha which is the assessment of the tongue. So oftentimes when people wake up in the morning, they have a like, heavy coating mm -hmm. on their tongue. 
and that is often an indication that the food is not digested. Um, you know, having foul breath, um, you often, we often talk about stool. What is this, this nature of the stool um, for a person? Is it, does it float? Does it sink? Um, okay. That's also something that we, um, we ask uh, very specific questions about. And overall energy levels throughout the day. Mm -hmm. That's something we question uh, very thoroughly about. So if there's like if there's depleted energy, um, a person has depleted energy, has a heavy coating, often has a uh, like a like a foul breath, mm -hmm. or um, you know has a very strong odor when they use the restroom. Uh -huh. So those kind of things are indications that there are something uh, there's some toxins in the body that are influencing your health. Okay. Then you did speak about even your mental health. Mm -hmm. So how would Ayurveda help like trauma patients? Maybe physical trauma, mental trauma, whatever. How would it mm -hmm. help? I mean, yeah. So like uh, like I said, there's three different body constitutions: vata, pitta, and kapha. Mm -hmm. So vata um, constitution. These are people who uh, tend to uh, experience anxiety quite regularly. Um, and because they're like uh, they're very lean, um, they they generally have a. It's not conclusive to everyone, but they generally have a leaner body constitution, um, and and it's almost like that. Uh, like for example, I am a Vata constitution, um, and it's quite easy for us to become ungrounded. We don't have that stability, that structure, that earthiness to our body to okay. withstand any sort of uh, heavy stress. Mm -hmm. um, so according to that. Um, you know, they tend to feel, get very much ungrounded quickly. Uh, people who have a more bulkier um, body constitution, they have a more slower, calmer, um, uh, body, uh, calmer, um, you know, mental disposition. Um, they tend to, um, whenever they're in, a, they experience any 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 sort of health imbalance, they feel some, oftentimes, like very lethargic. Um, and then the people who have a pitta constitution, they tend to be, um, they tend to be very uh, compulsive or very angry. Or those those are the sort of health imbalances that correspond to pitta dosha. Um, more agitated. More agitated. Mm -hmm. um, so, according to that, there because your body constitution also influences your mental constitution. And um, according to that, you know, certain exercises that I would I would tell my clients that this some sort of grounding poses would be more beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. Some more physical um, exercises for a kapha person would be beneficial. Okay. So you would actually want to introduce the opposite qualities. So if someone is very anxious, you want to give them something that's more grounded. If someone's more agitated, you want to give them something that's more calming and cooling. Right. If someone is feeling lethargic and slow and dull, you want to give something that is stimulating. Right. Mm -hmm. So and those how it operate uh, like in my with my trauma patients, the clients, right. I usually do. We call it dysregulated. They are very mm -hmm. much dysregulated, and then we, we, I give them like upper. If they are very much anxious, I give them down re regulated, okay. and then if they are very depressed and down. Then, then I give them up regulated, up. like yeah. a, you know, we have so this sort yeah. of warrior thing, and then, yeah. then we have the downward facing dog, dog yes. or the child pose. Uh -huh. right. So, you know, so then you have to see that where that person is because okay. that's why what he's saying is right, and that everything that's doesn't apply up. to yeah, everybody. Exactly. Some yoga postures yeah. are not maybe good for the person at that time where, okay. where they are in their life. So that's what. So that's what you're saying. That, that basically yoga and Ayurveda, so, you know, can yes. go hand so in hand. So maybe you can elaborate. You can elaborate on that. Yeah, like yoga and Ayurveda. Yeah. Both. So like what yoga? Um, yoga is basically it's a system for by which we can really understand. The main principle of yoga is to bring some sort of at least in Hatha yoga. Um, the practice of asana and pranayama mm -hmm. is to bring control to the breath and to the control to the body and eventually um, the focus, the end goal is to have some sort of control at the mind. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of like that. If you're not able to sit still and meditate and you know, how can you, how, if you can't have a body, com body physique that's able to, uh, that is conducive for meditation, right. then it's hard to meditate, you know, uh, bring uh, calmness to the mind. And what Ayurveda does is, 
and enables us to develop a physical constitution and body that allows us to practice yoga more effectively. Mm -hmm. And um, and so an Ayurveda uses uh, yoga as a system for us to treat um, specific health imbalances. So they're not necessarily, they're, they've come from a line of ancient teachings like our Vedas that, um, that serves a, they serve two separate purposes, but they often use each other. Okay. So yoga is, a, it's, it's, a, it's often, I mean, some people practice yoga for spiritual purposes. Um, and Ayurveda is also very spiritually oriented, but the focus is of, is of maintenance of health. Right. And sometimes Ayurveda yoga, yogis are focusing on trying to transcend um, what we consider as our body. Like, we're not the body, we're not the mind, we're something much more. That's what yoga is often emphasizing. And Ayurveda takes a little different approach. But what we see in right now, yoga therapy and Ayurveda often use each other mm -hmm. um, to, to bring a maintenance to the health and to also kind of bring some regulation to our mind and body. So, yeah. um, Arjun, having used um, yoga therapy and Ayurveda together on your clients, have you recommended um, mm -hmm. this therapy together and how, what are the results? Yeah, so I, I'm pretty much in my initial stages of okay. seeing uh, clients. I haven't uh, developed that, uh, that experience yet <laughs> okay. to say how it's um, affected uh, my clients, but through the program that I went through, it was quite interesting to see, um, you know, lot, one of the things that I noticed is um, how our health is often experienced very much by our habits. Mm. You know, everyone's a creature of habit, and it's really hard to break those habits for, um, you know, for people. Um, you know, having them to come to a, a certain daily routine when one is often frequently uh, living a life that's very much unregulated uh -huh. um, for so many years, it's so hard to break. Um, so that's something that as a counselor, um, what I found is quite rewarding but also challenging is to help people break through what is called samskaras, the, the, the impressions that we have from right. our previous experiences uh -huh. and in, in, in the scriptural se or, uh, spiritual sense from past lives. Uh -huh. um, so. That's something that we often, uh, I try to uh, take a consideration of um, when I'm working with a client. And by addressing sort of their, where, they're, where they are at their life and not what I just think is beneficial for them, mm -hmm. um, then I'm able to help them more effectively. So and then, yeah, the yoga therapy, of course, um, is, helps with me, uh, helps with, uh, I think the yoga, the pranayama, mm -hmm. helps them kind of, um, you know, come to a sort of level of groundedness where they can actually see what is good for them. Okay, sorry, we need to go on a short break. <laughs> the time goes by so fast. But when we return, we will uh, continue our conversation with Arjun Lutra and Bhavna Lutra on Ayurveda and Yoga. This is Chai Time on 99.5 FM. Welcome back to Chai Time on 99.5 FM. We are in conversation with Arjun Lutra and Bhavna Lutra. We have been talking like in-depth conversation about Ayurveda, yoga, and it's so interesting. I think we're learning a lot today. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, you know, you are literally like teaching us today. I know. <laughs> lots of information. Good yeah, information. exactly. Lots you, of you know, we, yeah, we were talking, you know, earlier you were talking about yoga and we do yoga also yeah. at and, Spenka. So, yeah. We see the benefits, actually. Uh, true, yeah, truly, we do. Yeah. It's uh, especially when we are doing the spin and we are doing the uh, the strength, and then last is yoga. That literally grounds us back, like brings us back. Even when we uh, finish doing, um, you know, the the whole session, and we are just laying down flat and just letting our minds float. It's it's such a it's such a serene feeling. Like yeah. truly it is. So, uh, you know, this topic talking about um, yoga and Ayurveda is, is truly like, it's, it's really educational for us. And, um, you know, people who have just tuned in, we are also on Facebook Live. So go on to Chai Time page and uh, watch the show live as well. 
And of course, Arjun, you were talking, uh, you know, a lot about that. And people who are watching you, looking at you, and saying this, this fellow is so young. I know. And <laughs> and he's uh, into Ayurveda. It's it's uh, it's kind of mind-boggling because a lot of the younger generations go into modern medicine. Yeah. They they you know they um, they always um, I guess they they want to learn more about that and not go back into uh, the ancient kind of, uh, you know, medicine, mm -hmm. right? So for you personally, what got you interested in that? Well, so from my, um, I'm also just uh, for, um, for everyone's, uh, for the listeners and everything, um, I'm also a, uh, going to be an incoming medical student right. at UTMB. So I do also have an interest in the modern medicine aspect as well. Um, but I think that uh, there can be a healthy inter integration of both of them um, because nowadays I think the way uh, we as a society look at health, it's kind of, uh, uh, we want to address the symptoms first before we actually address the root cause of health. So of course, um, to really make an impact with patients and to, to get them to um, uh, more, uh, open to the idea of taking a more holistic approach to health, I think it's important to understand what is the current concept of health for many people as they come, oftentimes they flock to the hospital to address their healthcare needs. Yeah. Um, so that's something why I'm interested in modern medicine as well. Um, but the reason why I got into Ayurveda specifically is to, uh, in a sense, when I was from a very young age, um, my parents uh, developed, gave me an interest, or kind of showed me the path of yoga and asana and pranayama. Um, that's something that we used to we practiced um, quite regularly. Um, you know, back in the um, uh, there was Baba Ram. They used to come to Houston, yeah. um, and he would always host these yoga camps and everything. And that's whenever I and my whole family we used to go. Um, attend those yoga camps, and I was I kind of found it very interesting that he was always often saying how if you do these certain exercises or you do these certain breath works, it helps with certain you know health imbalances, and I quite I kind of found it quite fascinating, and so then um, then that that really paved the way for my interest for a very long time. Uh, that's why I chose to. I was also interested in uh, in not only in the physical level, I was very spiritually oriented um, to understand the purpose of yoga, and um, and that's really what paved the way for me. Bhakti yoga. Okay. Yeah. Bhakti yoga. Ah, so uh, bhakti yeah. yoga specifically. Yeah. Okay. When we talk about spiritually, Arjun, and we were just before we went into the break, you know, we just you mentioned something about past life. Mm -hmm. So when you're born and you have, maybe you're born with certain recording of your past life mm -hmm. and then maybe your environment or your genes mm -hmm. uh, create you in this life. Mm -hmm. And depending on the environment, to a certain extent or a very large extent, I guess mm -hmm. science has shown that your cells react to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the environment that you're put in. But then, can how can you erase any negative trauma from past life? Or can you rather erase any kind of trauma from your past life or your current environment and put your body back into balance, um, mm -hmm. grounded or whatever is needed to make it you know, more yeah. corrective action. Can you right. do something like that with uh, a combination of yoga and uh, Ayurveda yeah. and meditation because we've spoken about meditation too. Yeah, for sure. So like to build on this concept of samskara, you know, uh, just for a to break down a very complex topic into simpler terms is okay. you know whenever we're in a uh, if someone goes through a very long and hard relationship with some person um, and they have this experience of like you know the person has uh, like treated them unfairly mm -hmm. or they've had any sort of trauma in that in that um, in that relationship they often carry that baggage into the new relationships that come right. in the future. Mm -hmm. And likewise, in a spiritual sense, the same baggage that we have, the baggage we end up having at the end of our past lives translates into this life. Right. It's these impressions that we carry. 
Um, that is what is the spiritual um, teaching, is that we often carry these impressions um, into these, um, into, from our past lives to these previous lives, to these present lives. Mm -hmm. And what um, Ayurveda has really found, um, I think the, at least personally, and also many of the teachings of Ayurveda focus on spirituality as something so important um, for correcting these samskaras. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that we often suggest to clients is chanting of mantras. Mm -hmm. um, and what does mantra mean? It means um, it is what that delivers the mind. Yeah. And, um, and I think that that is, um, uh, at the subtle level, this is, we carry things not only at the physical level, but the only way to uh, fix things at the physical level, at the cellular level, that we carry this information that we have we have to correct it at the subtle, subtle level, mm -hmm. which is our mind, our intelligence, and our uh, ego, our false ego. Ahankar is what the, the yeah. Sanskrit term is. So um, if we correct things at the subtle level, it, it, it increases the possibility for us to correct things at the physical level. Um, so that is something that we often suggest is, um, is to look at uh, you know, prescribing certain mantras, doing certain rituals. Um, there our Vedas have such a foundational knowledge on what you should do if you want to have something done. Like if you want to have, if you want to have a certain type of life, there is something in the Vedas for you, um, and there are certain practices that you can do to mm -hmm. have that. Awesome. Um, and um, often, what Ayurvedic counselors often do is they also work with Jyotishis. Right. So they work with astrologers, we think astrologers, to understand the, the charts. Mm -hmm. And our charts, our planetary, the planetary charts, and the, um, the positioning of our planets and all, the grahas, it, it, it tells us, um, it tells those who are practicing astrology, mm -hmm. what is the, the karma mm -hmm. that a person carries? Right. What is, these, uh, what is the, the influence of their karma, the influence of the karma um, onto this person's life from the previous karmas. Um, so often we work with astrologers to understand how we can um, help, a, uh, help a client. So there's many of the things that we want to, uh, to know to break through all of the you know, past impressions, all that past trauma requires a lot of um, not only physical remedies but spiritual remedies. Spiritual. Yeah, I, I completely believe uh, the spiritual aspect of it. It's not just about popping pills. I mean, I guess allopathy also helps. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, if you're in excruciating pain today, I mean, it can mm -hmm. help right now. But if you yeah. want to eliminate the root cause of a problem, then mm -hmm. you need to go back and study the history and the actual mm -hmm. system of that human being to mm -hmm. actually get him through that, not mm -hmm. just you know, right. symptoms, not just attacking the symptoms, correct? Exactly. And then, uh, the, I mean, I've heard this about gut brain. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate more on gut brain? And uh, one more question. Yes. <laughs> Kids, like when somebody is born, and a little kid, we, we don't know what sanskara they brought into this world. It's just, from what I understand, it's just mm -hmm. changing the roles, right? I'm mm -hmm. wearing this robe when I die and I'm reborn. I'm going to mm -hmm. be wearing another robe. But basically, my sanskaras will be passed on depending on what I've done in this life, mm -hmm. uh, if, I, if I'm correct. So how can we help, like talking about gut brain, if that can help change your, from a young age, mm -hmm. and can we cultivate good habits and improve gut health for yeah. a little child mm -hmm. by doing yoga, I mean, teaching them how to do yoga at a young age, not when we are you know, in the like 40s or 50s. Mm -hmm. But like little children of five, six years old. So how can you, can you elaborate something on that? Yeah, yeah. so... Uh, <laughs> I guess that... <laughs> I guess I lost too many questions. Yeah. Okay, so I, yeah, I also have a caller okay. uh, on air. So let's take him first and then we will answer Sonal's uh, question okay. as well. Yeah. Um, I guess you would need... Uh, hello, Sonal. Hello. 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 Hi, this is Chai Time. You're on air, so can you give us your name if you like? Uh, my name is Salmani Khan. I'm also one of the presenters at uh, Radio Dabba. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I just got to tune into Arjun's show and uh, really love your conversation. And uh, I was going through a lot of tough times in my life. And uh, uh, around 2012, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder type 2. And then Yeah, so I recently got into spirituality where I'm meditating and 
So I'm not actually quite familiar with regression therapy. Um, okay. um, maybe did you do? You, have you heard I'm of familiar that? with that. Okay. Yes. But, um, so it's more of inquiring into your past, right? Past. Yeah. When going past yeah. into the point where you even go to the as far as you can remember, and some people it can be as far as going into your uh, past life. Yeah. Uh, I can uh, explain it to Arjun really like briefly how I can explain regression therapy. Like, you know, uh, Arjun was just right now talking about uh, that, uh, you know, uh, once you're in a relationship, you carry a baggage with you and that applies to your next relationship, right? So same way uh, the bags that you carry from past life, uh, mm -hmm. you said that it carries with you in the present life. Uh, he said that he, uh, he was concerned with astrologers and all those uh, the, uh, the, the preachers at the mother and all of them, and they will tell you about, you know, what are the karma or So I'm a therapist, so I do work with a lot of clients with bipolar, and, and some of my clients have, um, so it's basically very much a blend of the Eastern and Western, and that they have sort of packaged into saying regression therapy. So it's very much into the astrological point of view that you are more of a getting in tune, tap into that, so tap into the the part of yourself, which is like I'm studying chakra healing, right? So we are, we have seven chakras and then we have koshas, you know? So when you study, which I'm studying and also I'm a student sort of learning, I'm a therapist, so I, I very much got interested into that, that aspect. And I learned that, you know, so if you, it's a self-inquiry, basically what you're going through is a self-inquiry and you're becoming, breaking the cycles to the point where you become more aware of your own energy level. Right? Exactly. So you are tapping into your own energy level. And of course, there are some people who facilitate that. It could be a therapist, it could be a person like Arjun, a Ayurvedic counselor, or it could be a astrologer. So, so they kind of guide you a path where you are actually into more, I mean, tapping into your own energy and bring that to that, your past life to your own self awareness. Oh, okay, exactly. Right? So, and, and so you. So you lot of you can go through different channels, right? So it could, like I said, from the Ayurvedic perspective, or a therapy counseling, or even astrologer, right? So, but it's it's more of we all are born with it. If we we are all born with this in, innate inner knowledge, right? So, but over years, with all what we call a polluted mind and polluted thoughts and uh, materialistic life, mm -hmm. we sort of cover our own energy, mm -hmm. right? We cover our, which we call it, um, oh, so how do I word it correctly? Yeah, so we sort of cover it up, and then we start seeking the, seeking the answers outside while the answers are inside, exactly. right? So, so it's, it's, that helps, you, you can, you can get there through, uh, which I was going to talk about that eight folds of yoga, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so uh, yama, niyama, pratyahara, uh, sadhana, uh, dhyana, dharana, and samadhi, right? Okay. So you go through these eight folds, you know, you practice the good moral and values, and some things, you know, give up, give up certain things, and bring some uh, regular or discipline in your life, right? And then you meditate, right? And you surrender, right? It doesn't matter what, what, what religion you practice and what faith you belong to really doesn't matter. You surrender to the divine, divine energy, which you, so you can tap into your own energy, right? And then you have uh, whatever it is which doesn't need to carry. You release. We are here to release and embrace, right? Embrace is the the what is we are here to to attain, right? Um, so we can only attain the knowledge and when we release our past baggage. Okay. But if we keep on carrying the past baggage, we will never be opening ourselves to receive, which is the divine, uh, you know, divine 
being God, Krishna, Allah, you know, Christ is trying to give us, we, we never tap into that because we're just sort of carrying this with us, right? So meditation helps with that. Mantra chanting helps with that. And uh, so there are different routes people can, any, or like Arjun was saying, different people uh, can get there different ways, right? Some people can do with chanting, dancing, and some people need to sit, right, and meditate. So, so it's just person to person is different. Like what he was talking about, Pita Kapha Dosha, you know, every body composition is different and they need different things to get there to, for their health and mental and health and well-being and spiritual being, right? We all are spiritual being, we just never tap into that. Because the materialistic life tells us like, okay, be, be so aware way. of your just physical self. We are yeah. beyond, we are not the body and we are not the mind. So we have to sort of, once we really understand that concept, then we can move forward, right? We basically, always get attached to the mind and body composition. Yes, sir. Basically, like, for example, in worldly life, you're eating food. That's yes. how the same way you have to feed your soul as well, right? Yes, so exactly. Just, that's right. Do you, you want to add body. something, Archie? You were saying something? Yeah, no. Um, yeah, so I, 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 I didn't know what the, I guess it's a term that is out there, regression therapy. Um, I think that we've come into different, different terms of uh, these teachings, but yeah, exactly what we were talking about, samskaras, and you know, carrying the impressions and trying to understand um, at the most subtle level how these impressions are affecting us uh, ourselves in this life is quite um, is quite what I guess I, if I'm understanding correctly, what regression right. therapy is. And I just want to say one more thing. Uh, <clears throat> I've been on a very high dose of medication since 2012, and recently, about for a month, I started meditating, and you mm. know. And maybe this is temporary something you need and nothing has to be permanent in our life, right? right. Only thing you have to see the permanent, we are not from permanent, so, right. so we have to think like the medicine is just temporary right. you need and meditation is helping you and let's just pray that you know you don't have, you, you get away from these medication and you find your own self-healing. Your own mind. Yeah. And it's 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 really nice to hear that yes. you found uh, you know uh, I guess a faith in something deeper than what is just like the medication. Yes, sir. Well, That's I'm basically uh, I'm basically I belong to Ismaili religion. I mean Ismaili sect of Muslim Islam religion. Mm -hmm. And uh, our Imam, if you have heard about mm -hmm. Imam Prince Khan, he mm -hmm. keeps saying that he always emphasizes that that uh, you uh, there is no such thing as there's no difference. Uh, I'd like to comment on that. Yeah, thank you so much thank for you coming. Thank you for calling in. <laughs> and we bow down to your divine energy. And Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Wow. Okay, that was wonderful. And thank you for answering his question. And I know this topic is really vast. And I, mm -hmm. I, I, before the caller, I was like trying to ask a 
so many questions in this question, and I know you're like, oh my god, now where should I start? I mean, okay, I wanted to focus just because I know we are running out of time. Mm -hmm. Just gut brain of quickly, you can elaborate, and then children, yoga, meditation, mantra, do you think it'll help children change their sanskara for a better life? This one I started with. That's, that. yes. <laughs> okay. So I'll, 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 I'll say I think it's easier to segue into the, the meditation part first and then if time go into gut okay. brain health. Because, um, so yeah, uh, I do think that meditation is something that, um, that everyone should get into. Um, and in, in schools, at least, you know, and, I, and you know, you study the science, you study math, you study English, you study everything. Um, but we don't really study about our true selves. And that's what not our modern, our modern education does not speak of um, what it, it, it talks about um, everything externally. It's trying to address everything externally. But we ne rarely talk about what's internally. Um, so I think that's something that everyone uh, should uh, should go to is understanding our spiritual selves that is eternal because everything materially um, is temporary like if I the thing that I would do today or what I remembered yesterday everything's temporary I can't remember everything and um, everything that comes in this world this body everything um, it has a beginning and also has an ending so what is that we should all at least and not even just children, but everyone should, including myself, which I'm still going through, is inquiring, um, but what, what is that is, which is in eternal? What is our spiritual self? Mm -hmm. And that starts with taking time to, you know, some people, the, and the best op the option that is prescribed often is doing some breath work to, to understand and to come to a level of stillness that enables you to understand what is eternally us. Um, so, I do think that as ch uh, the children, of course, um, you should, up, um, you know, indulge in their tendencies, whatever they enjoy to do, like to do, let them do, but dedicate some time as a family um, for those spiritual things, um, you know, reading scriptures or doing meditation or doing some sort of kirtan, mm -hmm. and, you know, chanting of mantras. Um, those are all um, something that would be beneficial for um, children to go through. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much, Arjun. Sorry, we're out of time. <laughs> What's going on here? But thank you so much, Arjun, uh, for coming here on Chai Time, talking about you know Ayurveda, yoga. And uh, thank you for all our listeners for tuning in and uh, even calling in. So we really appreciate that. Thank you, Bhavna, as always. <laughs> you. Yes. All of us yes. have yes. So, yoga is yes. not just ecstasy. It's, right. it's, it's, it's just a way of life. Yes. You yes. have to Absolutely. remember this as a way of life. We all are yogi. Oh, Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And uh, thank you so much, my beautiful co-host. Oh, oh, thank you, Bhavna. Thank you, Arjun. It was fantastic talking to you. I mean, I can go on and on. Yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you. Signing off, this is Chai Time on 99.5 FM.